Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Just Law on Ikra TV. I'm your host Ilyas Bubulia. This is the second part to the show. Uh, just before the break, we were talking about uh, visa applications and in particular where you have a husband or wife who's come, abro come from abroad in the United Kingdom. How do we look at extending their visa? I think we might have a caller online. So if that's the case, we'll go to that call and then return to our topic uh, after that. Uh, hello, Assalamu alaikum. Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Ji, wa alaikum salam. Ji, I want to ask a question for my brother. Ji, ji. My brother came to a student visa in Pakistan. Ji, okay. When he finished his study, he was married. Ji, okay. So, he got a spouse visa. Okay, ji. Spouse visa has been two years old. Ji, okay. So, when will he get indefinitely to remain? और दूसरा मैं ये पूछना चाहती थी कि उनकी डिग्री जो है वो बीए डिग्री नहीं थी तो क्या उनको इंग्लिश टेस्ट करना पड़ेगा जी किस तरीके के लिए वो आए थे जी आपका जो भाई है ना वो किस साल में यूके आया था बिकॉज़ एक 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 ऑप्शन होता है उसके भी डिफरेंट रिक्वायरमेंट्स होते हैं मगर एक ऑप्शन ये है कि अगर उसका 10 इयर्स यूके में हो गया तो इस पे भी वो शायद इनडेफिनेटली अप्लाई कर सकता है तो वो किस साल में आया था आपका भाई 2000 एंड 17 में और 17 में आया था, so recently ही आया है ना? जी। All right, okay। तो उसके लिए तो फिर student में जो आया UK में और यहाँ जो time student का जो उसने यहाँ गुजारा है as a student, वो उसके लिए इतना helpful नहीं है। उसको तो जो शादी की visa जो उसको मिला है ना, so जब से उस उसको spouse visa मिला, जब उसको जो biometric card मिला spouse का तो उसकी जो वैलिडिटी डेट है वहाँ से उसको फाइव इयर्स कंप्लीट करने पड़ेंगे सो अगर मार्च 2019 में अगर उसकी उसको मिला है तो फिर उसको वेट करना पड़ेगा अंटिल मार्च 2024 सो उसका जो स्टूडेंट का टाइम यहाँ है ना इतना हेल्पफुल नहीं है अगर उसने स्टूडेंट में सेवन एट इयर्स कुछ गुजारे होते यहाँ डिग्री किया मास्टर्स की पीएचडी अगर वो टाइम काफ़ी टाइम उसने अगर यहाँ गुजारा होता तो तो उसके पास एक ऑप्शन था वो टेन इयर्स में भी शायद वो अप्लाई कर सकता था मगर बिकॉज़ उसका शॉर्ट टाइम ही है स्टूडेंट पे तो उसको इससे कोई फायदा नहीं होगा उसको स्पाउस वीज़ा में फाइव इयर्स कंप्लीट करने पड़ेंगे और आपका सेकंड सवाल था वो वो डिग्री के बारे में ना तो उसने यूके में अभी डिग्री कंप्लीट नहीं की नहीं कंप्लीट की थी मगर एक साल का कोर्स था कोई बीटेक था या एनबीक्यू या इस तरह का था और डिग्री लाइक बीए अंडरग्रेजुएट डिग्री नहीं थी ओह राइट ओके और उसने जो होम कंट्री में कुछ उसने डिग्री किया है होम कंट्री में कि नहीं की है वहाँ पे बीए किया था वहाँ बीए किया हुआ था जी जी सो यहाँ का जो क्वालिफिकेशन है ना जो उसने वन ईयर कंप्लीट किया यहाँ से जो क्वालिफिकेशन मिला वो तो इनफ नहीं है क्योंकि अगर डिग्री होती यूके की तो इससे उसका काम चल जाता है एक्सटेंशन के वक्त वो सिर्फ वो ही बता सकता है कि मेरे पास यूके डिग्री है मगर अगर वो एक्सटेंशन के वक्त या इनडेफिनेट के वक्त अगर वो इंग्लिश क्वालिफिकेशन नहीं करना चाहता तो एक ऑप्शन उसके पास है अगर उसकी जो डिग्री है होम कंट्री की अगर उसका लेवल यू के डिग्री से बराबर है और वो कॉन्फर्मेशन यू के नारिक से ले सकता है और यू के नारिक ये भी कन्फर्म कर सकते हैं कि उसको इंग्लिश में उसकी पढ़ाई हुई थी तो फिर इससे वो इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज रिक्वायरमेंट से वो एग्जाम हो सकता है सो उसने बी ए पॉलिटिक्स में किया था जी लाहौर यूनिवर्सिटी से तो क्या वो नारिक most likely because Lahore University is one of the leading universities in Pakistan so most likely Pakistan is the UK most likely comparable to the UK and as far as I know its teaching is in English so there is a possibility that if you go to the UK website and if you have a qualification for the UK and transcript if you have a certificate of comparability which says that yes these two qualifications are, are at the right level. So the Pakistan qualification is at a UK degree level. The second, what do they send? One is a certificate of comparability. And secondly, they also confirm that the medium of instruction was in English or not. They have this information uh, for, the, for the large uh, universities abroad. So it might be worth doing that. If they get this, then they will extension extension or indefinite work in English language. 
आपकी सर्टिफिकेट नहीं करनी पड़ेगी बट यू स्टिल हैव टू डू द लाइफ इन द यूके टेस्ट वो तो करना ही पड़ता है लाइफ इन द यूके टेस्ट तो अगर नारिक ने कहा कि कंपेरेबल है तो तो फिर कोई इशू नहीं है अगर नारिक ने कहा नहीं तो जो टेस्ट जो है वो उसी वक्त देंगे जब एप्लीकेशन डाली जाएगी इनडेफिनेटली टू रिमेन की जी वो जी जी वो टाइम पे ही वो करेगा ना मगर वो लाइफ इन द यूके इनडेफिनेट के वक्त तक करना ही पड़ेगा इवन दो कि अगर यूके नारिक ने कहा कि यस योर पाकिस्तान लाहौर यूनिवर्सिटी डिग्री इज कंपेरेबल टू यू के डिग्री अगर उसने कन्फर्म कर भी दिया तब भी लाइफ इन द यू के टेस्ट करना ही पड़ता है तो सिर्फ ठीक है तो लाइफ इन दूसरा मैं पूछना चाहती थी आपने कुछ बात की थी मैं किसी और को भी जानती हूँ कि स्टूडेंट वीज़ा अगर कोई आया हो जिसने पी एच डी की हो या इस तरह के मतलब एक साल से ज़्यादा जिस तरह मेरे भाई ने किया डिग्री तो अगर उनका टेन ईयर्स रेजिडेंस हो मगर उसके बीच में फॉर एग्जांपल जिस तरह का टेलमेंट किसी की हो चुकी हो अगर कॉलेज बंद हो चुका हो तो वो टेन ईयर्स के अंदर जो ब्रेक आ जाती है तो अगर फिर उनको स्पाउस वीजा मिल जाए तो क्या उनको फिर भी आई एल आर मिल जाता है बावजूद क्योंकि इवन दो ब्रेक आई होती है टेन ईयर्स लॉफल रेजिडेंस में जी ठीक इसमें है ना वट टाइप ऑफ ब्रेक था वो देखना पड़ता है इसमें सो इसमें सिर्फ अगर लेट से फॉर एग्जाम्पल स्टूडेंट की वीजा उसकी कटेल हुई और उसको नोटिस दिया कि फिफ्टीन ऑफ जून आपकी वीजा खत्म होगी और उसने फिफ्टीन ऑफ जून से पहले एप्लीकेशन डाल दिया डिफरेंट कैटेगरी में जैसे स्पाउस में डाल दिया सो फिफ्टीन ऑफ जून उसकी कटेलमन डेट है मगर उसने टेंथ ऑफ जून को अप्लीकेशन स्पाउस पे डाल दिया तो इसमें फिर कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं है उसको वो ब्रेक काउंट नहीं करते मगर सेकेंड एग्जाम्पल अगर फिफ्टीन ऑफ जून में उसका कटेलमेंट होने वाला है और उसने स्पाउस अप्लीकेशन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी को डाला सो फाइव ईयर्स की ब्रेक फाइव डेज की ब्रेक आ गई फिफ्टीन ऑफ जून फिनिश हो गया फाइव डेज के बाद ट्वेंटी को उसने स्पाउस का अप्लीकेशन डाला तो वो जो ब्रेक है फाइव डेज का इससे प्रॉब्लम आ सकता है टेन ईयर कैटेगरी में अभी तो रेजिडेंस जो है वो टेन ईयर्स पे भी लॉफुल होना चाहिए यानी कि ब्रेक नहीं होनी चाहिए बिल्कुल स्टूडेंट स्टूडेंट वीजा पे आए हुए हैं जी 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 सही बात है जी जी इवन इवन अ फाइव डे ब्रेक भी होता है ना तो इससे भी अभी वो आई को रिफ्यूज कर रहे हैं उसके गाइडेंस में क्या लिखा है कि होम ऑफिस के पास डिस्क्रेशन है कि उसको वो इग्नोर करे या न करे करंट जो केस लॉ है जो रफली अबाउट समर लास्ट ईयर जो डिसाइड हुआ था तो इसमें जो अपर ट्राइब्यूनल है उसने कहा कि वो रिफ्यूज कर सकते हैं अगर इवन दो दिस अ फाइव डे ब्रेक टेन ईयर लॉन्ग रेजिडेंस में इवन अ शॉर्ट ब्रेक कैन लीड टू अ रिफ्यूजल वो होम सेकेंड होम ऑफिस का वो डिसीजन है कि वो रिफ्यूज करे या ना करे इसमें कोर्ट इंटरफियर नहीं करेंगे वो केस अब आगे चल रहा है अभी जी मगर मगर मतलब अपील अपील पे पे चल चल रहा रहा कोर्ट में भी जाते हैं ना तो कोर्ट तो आपको इनडेफिनेट लीव ग्रांट नहीं कर सकते ना ये प्रॉब्लम है सो नॉर्मली ये बंदा अगर वो वो स्टूडेंट से अभी वो स्पाउस पे आ गया है तो उसके पास एक बेसिस है यू के रहने का स्पाउस का बेसिस है ना सो इस पर वो रह सकता है सो एज फार एज द कोर्ट इज़ कंसर्न वो सिर्फ यही कहते हैं कि स्पाउस कैटेगरी में जो फाइव फाइव ईयर्स का रिक्वायरमेंट है वो कंप्लीट करो फिर आपको आई एल आर मिल जाएगा ये ये तो नहीं है कि होम ऑफिस आपको निकाल सकते हैं निकाल रहे हैं ये तो ये तो नहीं है ना ये तो सिर्फ आपको इंडेफिनेट चाहिए तो कोर्ट ये कहे कोर्ट का पोजिशन ये होगा कि आप फाइव ईयर्स कम्प्लीट कर कर लो स्पाउस में अगर फॉर एग्जाम्पल किसी का दस साल हो गया कोई और कैटेगरी अभी रही नहीं है अगर वो स्पाउस में भी नहीं जा सकता क्योंकि शादी नहीं हुई है और दस साल हो गया अभी वो फिनिश होने वाला है और उसने इनडेफिनेटली अप्लाई किया उसके टेन ईयर्स में ब्रेक आ गया तो उसको अपील मिलनी चाहिए और अपील में आप कोर्ट से आर्ग्यू कर सकता है कि ये ये, ये बंदे को रिमूव नहीं करना चाहिए मगर वो इनडेफिनेट नहीं मिलेगा आपको सिर्फ वो कोर्ट एक्सटेंशन दे सकती है बट थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर योर कोर्ट थैंक यू वेरी मच हेलो असल जी वाले जी थैंक यू फॉर कॉलिंग जी क्वेश्चन 
I've been told that you know when you apply for um, uh, when you apply for your application, of course you go uh, for your visa, and um, you, there's like a fast track yeah. you could do. Yeah. Um, I just want to know that uh, if you apparently you pay about five hundred pound more than you get answer in two weeks. I don't yeah. know how much. So how much uh, would be under. Take it. Brother, are you talking about an application from abroad to come to the UK, or are you talking about? Yeah, uh, uh, yeah I'm, I'm in the UK. I've got married from Pakistan. I'm going to call my wife over. Okay, all right. So uh, uh, th th there is a priority service. Uh, okay. It's an extra six hundred pounds. Okay. And if you use the priority service, uh, they will normally give a decision within about five to six weeks. Okay, even with the priority service, yeah? Uh, with the priority service, it is still five to six weeks to get a decision. Um, now, if you don't use the priority service, you use the yeah. normal service, yeah. they take about three months to make a decision. See, but is, is it a chance if you don't use the priority service, there's a chance they can still give you an answer in a couple of weeks even? They can, but it's, it's the earliest I've normally seen is about two months. Two months. So, yeah. but, 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 but if I do do the priority service, they'll definitely, de I'll definitely get an answer within five, six weeks then. Yes, I mean, in 90% of cases, it should come through in five to six weeks. They don't guarantee that they will, okay. but in 90% of cases, there is a decision within five to six weeks. So with the extra priority, you'll get an answer 90% within five, six weeks, five, six weeks. And if yes. you don't give it, you'll get an answer in, in what, two months? Then? In about three months, no, no. If three months, yeah? Three months. If you're lucky, you might get it quicker. Quicker. Uh, but okay. you got to think, you know the way they work? When the application goes in and they look at it, okay. some cases are so straightforward. Let's say a lot of evidence of relationship and you work for the NHS okay. or, or the local authority. There's okay. nothing for them to investigate. Ne? So okay. you'll get through straight away. Okay. Contrast that with a situation where you've started working for a small employer, a small okay. a shop. They want to investigate your employment, so they want to check with NHS, they want to check with HMRC, they want to maybe interview you and the employer. So that's going to take slightly longer. So that's where there's a slight delay. So if at the initial stage, your case is fantastic. Okay. That's why even without using the priority service, you might get through within two months. I've got you, I've got you. It depends on, they do, they have a sifting process where initially when they look at it, they may not investigate it and it comes very quickly. So we, we don't want to use the priority service. If it's a yeah. very, very strong case, you work for a public sector, it may not take six weeks. You might be lucky, you might get a decision in four, four and a half weeks because there's nothing to investigate. No? I've got you, I've got you. That's how they generally work. Okay, and uh, my other question was that, you know when it, that you, you have to show your recent um, uh, pay slips and ba bank statements for the last six months? Yeah. Um, with that one, um, I've had a slight issue in which um, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, uh, uh, next two, hopefully two weeks or end of this week, I should be submitting my application. But what happened was um, that my pay slip, uh, my payment, which was meant to go in the month of November, obviously what happened was, they done, it was like a bit of a misunderstanding. They never put it in November. Okay. So what happened was obviously um, I thought it was going to mess up my case. But then when I spoke to my solicitor, he said that it's not a problem. Um, they paid me tw they paid me twice in January. So okay. one was for January's payment, one was for November. And he's going to write me a, like a cover letter on what, what the reason is, or reason for this, what happened. Okay. Yeah. okay. Um, in my experience, as long as you explain it, yeah. it should be okay. But you know the November payment? Um, yeah. How late did it go into your account? Basically, um, so how it works with my uh, my salary, uh, monthly salary is that, um, uh, so for example, now it's February, and so in the beginning of, sorry, in March is coming up now, and so in the beginning of, on the 5th of March, I will get paid right, okay. for the month of February. That's how it works. I understand, yeah, I understand. It, yeah. it works like that. So, yeah. uh, so basically, they missed, so they paid me in January, so he missed that about a month. A month later, he paid me, basically. Okay. Then, uh, let's say, for example, if the employer does a letter and explains could use due to a payroll error, or we weren't able to process it, or, or, or something uh, along those lines, as yeah. long as you explain it, and as yeah. long as it's a one-off mistake, in my experience, yeah. you get away with it. Okay. Um, but if it's completely messed up, you know, every month is a problem then. But yeah. generally speaking, if you don't explain it in a letter, you've got a problem. If yeah. the employer explains it, say, look, this is what happens, payroll error, or the person processing payroll wasn't in, or, or whatever. Uh, if it's explained, mm. generally speaking, it isn't a problem. Okay, okay. I mean, the al alternative is you wait another six months there, so. Yeah, basically, I've got you here. And, you know, um, um, I've got like a, like a, there's a list here, yeah, like briefly, if I could say it to you, like, 
passport copy of wife, passport original, two passport photos, pay, six, six months pay slips, six months bank statements, number six, accommodation survey, number seven, owner's letter of accommodation, yeah. number eight, English test certificate, number nine, TB medical, yeah. number 10, NICAR certificate English, yeah. number 11, employment contract, number 12, employee's letter, mm. number 13, proof of remittance, number 14, proof of contact of relationship, and number 15, her, her, her parents' detail and address in Pakistan. Yeah. Is yeah. that the full list? It is. Some of, some of the things in there you don't really need. Uh, L- like? So, two passport size photographs for your wife. You, you don't yeah, need I, I've, I've got that. But you, you, don't, don't, yeah. you don't need it because there's no way, no place to submit it. You don't need it. Proof of your residence, you don't need. Um, proof, uh, one second. Proof of, uh, proof of, of, of um, what, what, is, what do you say again? Proof you of? said proof of residence. You don't, you don't need to put your bills in. You don't need that. Okay. 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 Uh, contract of employment and P60, they're not mandatory. It's up to you whether you put them in or not. You know, number 12, 11, I said employment contract, employment letters. Is that just to show that we are working, I've got ah, a contract with them? Ah. So, you know, for the employment, yeah. the only mandatory documents are employment letter, yeah. six months wage slips, yeah. six months bank statements. I've got you. The only P60 and contract, they're not mandatory. Uh, I, I, I never put them in. Um, employment okay. letter, six months wage slips, six months bank statements. For your accommodation, proof of ownership, copy of the deeds, housing report, own, owner's letter saying, look, my son can live here, etc. Okay. Assume, yep. So it, the, the owner's letter is from the parents that my son's living here, we give permission, yeah? That's it. That's it. And, and, the accom- and the accommodation letter, that's the basic accommodation survey is like the estate agent to come and the survey that yeah, you know. Yeah. So, so for house. accommodation, three things, yeah? deeds, inspection report, yeah. a letter from your mum and dad or, or dad, whoever owns the property. That's all you need for accommodation. So, so, so say that again, deed, yeah? Deeds, inspection. the land registry deeds, housing yeah. inspection report. Yeah. And le- letter from your parents or your dad, whoever owns the property. Okay, okay. And the proof of remittance, that's that, that letter we keep when you send money that, to yeah. it. Oh, no, that's proof of remittance, then, not yeah, residence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So on the relationship, now move on to the relationship. How do you prove the relationship? Yeah. Wedding photographs? Yeah, yeah okay. Other, okay. other photographs together? Yeah. Telephone calls, proof. Yeah, Messages, yeah. proof. Yeah, yeah. And if you, proof of uh, sending money abroad, proof of remittance. It's optional if you want to put that in. The key documents are wedding photographs, other photographs together after the wedding, more casual photographs, telephone yeah. calls, and messages. They're, th- they're the key documents. Okay. Proof of you sending money is not necessary. If you've done it, put it in. If you haven't, it doesn't matter. Okay. And you know, I've got like um, the, you know, like when I've been calling, I've been calling through WhatsApp. Um, need, WhatsApp calls. Okay, so you need to take it, it, and, I, and I've printed out like the call list and all that. Is, is that okay? Yeah. So what you do instead of doing the list, you should go in to the actual call for that day. Yeah. yeah basically, on that call, on that day, it says the the date and the call and how long the duration was. That's what you need. You take a screenshot of that. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what I've got. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, did you say well, I've not printed out the conversation messages? Is that conversation. And don't don't print out the conversation. Okay. Yeah. How long have you been talking to your wife for? Um, it's been a, a couple, well, I got married in, in November 2019. Okay, all right, okay. So let's say you put the information in from uh, August, September. All yeah. you need for every week, take two screenshots. Yeah. When you scroll up and down uh, on the messages, the first message for the day, the date will show up. Just the first message of the day will have a date. Yes. Take a screenshot of that. And in a week, just do about two. Understand, yeah, because because what what I've done is well, I've printed it anyway, so I might as well tell you. From um, I went back and from November 2019 until beginning of February 2020, I've printed everything I made into like a, it's like a little folder I've made, and it's, it's, everything's printed out on there. What did you do? Did you export the chat history? Is that what you did? Uh, yeah, basically, what I've done was um, I, I I I I edited the, um, the 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 media photos and I've sent it to my email, and then from there I printed it out. Okay, export chat history doesn't look very good. Uh, in the same way that you've done your WhatsApp calls and you've taken screenshots, if you were to just do two screenshots a week, and if you've been talking, let's say, for about six months, um, you'll have about 50, 60 screenshots, two a week. Um, that looks better. And if you print them three, f- four to a page or something, that, that's going to be better, easier, if you do it that way. Okay. And you know, the fact that I got married in November and now three months later I'm submitting my application is not a problem in that, is it? No, no, that's the perfect time to, uh, perfect time to apply. Okay, because you know you hear, you hear people say, oh, you just got married now, you have to wait for six, seven months, so no, you shouldn't no, do it no, early. And no, no, perfect time. What it does is uh, 
if you got married in November, came back, let's say, in November, December. Yeah, uh, I, 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 I got married in November and I, I come back on the 21st of December. Okay, so at least uh, you've been here for about two months. Yeah, so yeah, in I've been those here two months, months you've managed to get some more evidence together as well, as well no? yep. o of, of talking, sending her money, chatting with her. So that's your evidence of the relationship. To be quite honest, um, in my experience, where you've got married, within a short period of time, you're applying for your wife's visa. Relationship is, is never an issue. They look at your wedding photographs, other photographs together, some calls and messages, it's never an issue. You just need to make sure your finances are fine. You don't, you don't fine. make a you. mistake on finances. Uh, what, one last question. On the, it says your, her parents teach an address in Pakistan. Is that is the, the, the date of birth, the address, where they're living and stuff like that? Nene. You know, for the parents' details, all yeah. you need to get is the parents' name and date of birth. That's all you need to get. Okay. Oh, okay. I've got the full, I've got the way they lived as well, but okay, I've got you understanding. Yeah, you. Because, you know, when you do the form, all it says is, what's her, she's the applicant, yes, applic so the, your mum's name, date of birth, place of birth. Uh, dad's uh, name, place of birth, date of birth and nationality. I mean, we know what the nationality is anyway. Place of birth, you can put Pakistan down if you want, but you know roughly where, where they've been born. It's really the spelling of their name and date of birth is what you need. You don't okay. need their address, because okay. nowhere in the form do they ask for parents address and then you know you know your wife's address in Pakistan when they ask yep. the best place to get the wife's proper address for Pakistan is if you look at her TB certificate yes. the address on the TB certificate is is, is an accurate address oh for okay, her. I got you I got you so, so and you know th this English and TB you know, of, um, of they've sent me the originals to the post I've got the originals mm. you don't you don't well that's fine you don't need the originals um, okay. because in the end all the documents will be scanned and uploaded anyway so you okay, don't, you don't okay. need anything. And all this, when I submit it, 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 it all is uploaded onto the computer you don't, uh, and then it, it's sent through there, yeah? Yeah. It's you don't need to go after that, go to the post office, send it off. Like no, you, there, is, there is a way of doing that, but that's just an uh, unnecessary hassle. Um, okay. What you do is you scan your documents. Okay. And when you book, book an appointment for your wife, um, on that website, there's a facility there for up, up, uploading your scanned documents. That, that's, the, that's the way you do it. Um, so you don't post anything anywhere. You don't take it to the visa center. You basically, s those scanned documents, you basically upload. You can, if you want, take the file to a visa center. They charge about 75 pounds, I think, and they scan it for you. But you don't really need to do that. If you go to a lawyer, most lawyers will say, okay, um, let's get your documents in order. We'll scan the documents ourselves. We will upload the documents ourselves. So that that's let me run through that list very quickly. Um, so it'll be from abroad, India, Pakistan, wherever, wherever it is. It's uh, wife's passport, English certificate, TB certificate, marriage certificate. From the UK, your passport. In terms of finances, employment letter, six months wage slips, six months bank statements, accommodation is land registry deeds, housing inspection report, a letter from your parents, relationship, wedding photographs, other photographs together, evidence of telephone calls, evidence of uh, uh, WhatsApp messages, if you've sent money, evidence of that. They're the things that you actually need to get together. The list that you just uh, read out to me, it's more or less accurate. There's some stuff in there which you don't actually need. Um, key thing is make sure your finances are right. Things are up to date, your bank statements are up to date, your wage slips are up to date, your employment letter is up to date and you know, confirms your employment, whether it's permanent or not, confirms your salary, etc. Concentrate on getting your financial documents right. That unfortunately brings us towards the end of the show. We should be back next week on Monday uh, when we will discuss today's topic in greater detail. Uh, we should be back next week on Monday at 6 o'clock, inshallah. Until then, Islamic.